A vast mateys. Thank you all for joining me this Friday. I see we have some new faces joining us today, so we'll be starting with the basics. And allow me to introduce myself. I am Grand Noodle, keeper of the secret sauce. Also, for you returning folks, don't worry, I talked to the manager. We can stay in the Olive Garden late tonight. They won't kick us out again. And so, mateys, open your gospel to page 78. Today, we speak of the eight I'd really rather you didn't in a particular order. Number eight. I'd really rather you didn't do unto others as you would have them do unto you if you are into um stuff that uses a lot of leather slash lubricant slash Las Vegas. If the other person is into it, however, pursuant to number four, then have at it and for the love of Mike wear a condom. Honestly, it is a piece of rubber. If I didn't want it to feel good when you did it, I would have added spikes or something. What can we learn from this axiom? First, it is that the spaghetti themselves has affirmed the legitimacy of my cousin's, Mike's, position in the clergy. You will, by the love of Mike, address him as your loveliness. Second, we are brought back to an age-old comparison. Consent and Parmesan. Consent is, more so than tea, it is as Parmesan. Consent and Parmesan. It's as simple as that. Say, if someone that you fancy, perhaps someone with a saucy attitude and sizable meatballs, asks you to parm their spaghetti, then you may parm the spaghetti. As our potster did say, if the other person is into it. However, if you were to fancy someone with angel hair locks and breath sweeter than garlic, and you were to say, pour Parmesan in their pasta without asking, that, as the Lord wouldst definitely say, is a dick move. Pouring parm on pasta without their asking is a no. And they can tell you to stop pouring, too. Continuing to pour after they have said no it is big, big no. 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 Bad. Unless. Unless. You have a previous arrangement in which saying no means yes. But that is why the flying spaghetti monster did its decree, and it came to pass that the first safe word is when. So remember, my brothers and sisters and siblings, to palm pasta pre-permission is profane. Don't be a dick. Number four. I'd really rather you didn't indulge in conduct that offends yourself or your willing, consenting partner of legal age and mental maturity. As for anyone who might object, I think the expression is, go f*** yourself, unless they find that offensive, in which case they can turn off the TV for once and go for a walk for a change. Parmesan, folks, just remember Parmesan. But that's our lesson for number eight. There's no reason to beat off a dead horse. Huh? It's no reason to beat a dead horse. But there is something to be learned here. Some people find go f*** yourself offensive. I mean, I didn't know. Everyone I know swears like sailors. I mean, I mean they're pirates. So I turned on my TV. Now, I know. I hadn't done that since they canceled Firefly. And folks... It's scary out there. All those bandanas people are wearing, they're not new acolytes. I mean, I was so happy for a while. 
I mean, America is run by an aggressive mango. China got taken over by Winnie the Pooh. And somehow the queen is still alive. I mean, I suppose that's good news. But, but still, the lesson here? Keep your TVs off. Just keep them off. Forever. And we can all go on a walk. Together. Please? Number seven. I'd really rather you didn't go around telling people I talk to you. You're not that interesting. Get over yourself. And I told you to love your fellow man. Can't you take a hint? We have much to learn from this. First of all, sorry lesbians. Also, hetero guys, sorry. But it's high time we were all touched by a noodly appendage or two. Oh, see me after the sermon. But more importantly, my friends, please pick up your Gospels and turn to page zero. No, no, I don't mean... No, 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 it's not the acknowledge... Okay, my friends, close your Gospels. Behold the cover, and lo, you shall see the author of this Gospel is not the flying spaghetti monster. No, it is Bobby Henderson. So where did this... Number seven of the eight I'd really rather you didn't come from. Huh? Bobby? Number seven says, I'd really rather you didn't go around telling people I talk to you. So where did this come from, Bobby? Where did the book come from, then, Bobby? Is there something you want to tell us, Bobby? If the FSM doesn't talk to you, then where did the book go? Oh, I, I gotta go. I gotta... Oh, God! Ah! Ah! Number six. I'd really rather you didn't build multi-million dollar churches slash temples slash mosques slash shrines to my noodly goodness when the money could be better spent... Take your pick. A. Ending poverty... B. Curing disease. C. Living in peace, loving with passion, and lowering the cost of cable. Now, friends, I know this is shocking news, but their noodliness means this in a metaphorical don't build multi million dollar churches, temples, mosques, shrines. Well, yes, metaphorical. It's either metaphorical or Olive Garden is a sin. Oh, yeah, I bet you think it's metaphorical now. Okay, maybe the flying spaghetti monster hasn't been keeping up with inflation, or maybe they don't realize how expensive it is to open an olive garden. But more olive gardens, more employment, which is A, ending poverty. Not to mention C, living in peace. Think of it. Every corner a garden and the breadsticks would flow free. Unlimited breadsticks for the whole world. And too long have we held this blessing alone. It's time we open the floodgates and let the unlimited breadsticks sweep over the globe. A gluttonous tide to bury us all. Nations would fall before the coming of our garlicky rapture. All barriers would be bridged with wheat, and the streets would run red. Red, not with the blood of our fellow humans, but the marinara of a new tomorrow. Yar! Number five. I'd really rather you didn't challenge the bigoted, misogynist, hateful ideas of others on an empty stomach. Eat, then go after the bitches. This is about Thanksgiving dinner. See, hunger leads to hangriness. Hangriness leads to frustration, and frustration leads to shouting matches with idiots. Thanksgiving is an annual death gauntlet for all of us, but if you're yelling, you're one of the idiots. Now, what the flying spaghetti monster is really saying is chew, swallow, 
then go after the bitches. To yell with spaghetti in your mouth, my friends, sauce will go everywhere. Now, I can support an impromptu baptism, but food waste is also a sin. Food waste gets you sent to the special corners of hell. It's where every other beer river is actually curdled mellow yellow, and the strippers will always have tastefully placed basil leaves. Chew and swallow, my friends. Spitters are quitters, and then they get sent to hell. Number three. I'd really rather you didn't judge people for how they look, or how they dress, or how they talk, or, well, just play nice, okay? Oh, and get this through your thick heads. Woman equals person, man equals person, samey, samey. One is not better than the other, unless we are talking about fashion, and I'm sorry, but I gave that to women and some guys who know the difference between teal and fuchsia. Here is where we can learn that the doubly meaty one is fallible. The flying spaghetti monster is not perfect. The flying spaghetti monster is colorblind. Teal? F fuchsia? They look nothing alike. Who could possibly not know the difference between them? And if you're going to try to say that I must be one of the blessedly fashionable guys, oh, please. Crocs are just colanders for your feet. Uh, my last congregation didn't like that either, but they couldn't handle the truth. And while they'll stay unwashed, all my negative energy will be strained out of me on both ends. But while it may be true, it sure isn't fashionable. So I'm just as flawed as the flying spaghetti monster, and they're just as flawed as me, and you, and all of us. As stated, samey samey. Number two. I'd really rather you didn't use my existence as a mean to oppress, subjugate, punish, eviscerate, and or, you know, be mean to others. I don't require sacrifices, and purity is for drinking water. If I decide to eviscerate a fool in the name of pasta, it will be because my Todd was feeling sweeney and I wanted to handle me some meatballs. However, I'd like to add another word to the list. Oppress, subjugate, punish, eviscerate, be mean, and save. Well, no one sees themselves as the bad guys, and hey, neither do we, though we are pretty great. But the punishing, the subjugating, too often are they done in the name of saving the lost. Now, a life without spaghetti... I mean, I'd say isn't worth living, but I don't go around strangling people with a noodle that choose to live without. But it is easy to start seeing yourself as the good guy. Just don't hurt the people you love in the name of saving them. You'd probably see yourself as helping them. You'd probably believe you're doing it to save them from themselves. But you'd still be hurting them. So don't save anyone that doesn't ask for it first. Parmesan, remember? You know, I saved you from yourself. That's an excuse you tell your little sister after you ate her Dippin' Dots. Number one. I'd really rather you didn't act like a sanctimonious, holier-than-thou ass when describing my noodly goodness. If some people don't believe in me, that's okay. Really, I'm not that vain. Besides, this isn't about them, so don't change the subject. And the great baller is right. It's not about them. It's about us. What? Did you think this was about God? If this was about God, the flying spaghetti monster would have been invited. Has anything I said been towards God? No, nothing we're saying here is for their benefit. Besides, 
The Flying Spaghetti Monster is all-powerful. Okay, mostly... Okay, he's pretty powerful. I mean, they could do what they want. They could make a new world. And I, I'm ready for Earth Seasoning 2. Heck, this year certainly felt like a season finale. But the point stands, this is about us being nice to each other. This gospel, this is the list of instructions your parents leave so you don't burn the house down while they go and watch Life of Brian with your cooler aunt that shows cats over kids. You know, she's got a hot tub to watch Monty Python in. Your parents have you. What are you good for? You became a pastafarian instead of doing something productive, like actually working at the Olive Garden. Although, speaking of, they're, uh, they're heading out in a minute, and I, I have to put this colander back. So, uh, same time next week. Thank you for listening to The Spaghetti That Sticks. A big thank you to The Prophet, Bobby Henderson, and all the contributors to The Loose Cannon for bringing the spaghetti into my life. And of course, thank you to all the Pastafarians and pirates out there, and another big thank you to unlikelyicons.com for our art. And finally, a thanks to the Flying Spaghetti Monster for, you know, everything. Ramen. <laughs>